www.ebitmoney.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, our original guest was supposed to be Norm Winsky, but unfortunately, uh, the old cowboy had the old date wrong. He's on next Monday on the 22nd. Norm will be our guest, so we'll have him on the 22nd. But no guests this week so far, but I'll try to find some folks who would chip in this week to give us some great information like they always do. We're going to start out the day with a question from one of our listeners, and that is my opinion on natural gas. As you can see here, this is the natural gas contract. You can see the big three drive to a top pattern that we had right up in here. We came down perfect A, B, C, D, and then we went up, and then we came down. We stayed down for 10 days, hovering right at the 38% level, not quite making the 50%. But sitting right there, the question that the young man asked was, what is the outlook for natural gas for today? So what I usually do, and this is what I was doing today, watching natural gas, because it's one of the better things to trade. You'll notice here that we had a really strong move over the last couple of days, closing up in the near part of the, of the range up in here. So the first thing that I would do coming in in the morning, what I would be going in and looking at the hourly chart just to see where we've been over the last few days. So if you put up the hourly chart, I think you'll be able to see, you know, what we were looking at for today. And as you can see here, there was our low we made five days ago. You can see the perfect A, B, C, D coming in at none other than our old 382 retracement level and has rallied $4,000 since that level as you can see here we're not very far from breaking out to the upside here anything above that nine dollars remember the gasoline or the natural gas that they have over in uh, the uk is uh, highly regulated well ours is regulated too but over there it's got taxes that uh, out the quietus you can't even <laughs> you can't even imagine what they are i think it's uh it's five times what it is uh, over there than what it is here. So, And they're getting ready for a, a big winter. But, you know, who knows? Something really big has happened today, folks, in the markets. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the, the main thing is, is that, you know, the crude oil went down and took out the old low at 87. And uh, we went down to 86.90. And then there was no selling there. Gee, that was telling you that, my goodness, maybe you ought to take a nibble at it there. And, of course, it's rallied, uh, you know, well over $2 a barrel here so far today, still being down $3 a barrel because of the news coming out of China was that the oil demand for China was at a, I believe, a two-year low. In other words, they haven't had much demand for oil since two years ago. That certainly doesn't make any sense. Now, they had some very bad data come out of uh, China today uh, on the economic front, and the market didn't even care at all. It just turned around, and um, the, the Chinese market was down just a little bit to begin with and then moved a little bit higher, and the same thing with ours. And, you know, this is why, you know, being a technician is can be a real advantage, folks, because you don't know what's going to happen to these things. Just to give you a, a rough idea, I wanted to walk through, because this is what we were looking at today coming in. I wanted to show it to you so you can see you know where we are and I'll and I'll walk through the numbers with you because the numbers are what's important and the reason why they're important is the big boys play with these numbers and uh, you know we're certainly not a big boy here but you know we know how they play you can see this is the Dow Jones you can see the big ABCD to the downside perfect parallel channel you can see the beautiful move here coming in here uh, Friday on the 12th uh, it's a perfect 135 pattern and what happened? The Dow is down 250 points uh, this morning, early. And let's just get up here. And I want to show you because, folks, if you don't believe that these folks out there 
are playing with algorithms that we un that we think we understand because they trade off of these numbers of standard deviations and you know Fibonacci numbers and ABCD. But look at the look at the low on Friday right there. That low on Friday right there was a 61% retracement of the low that we made two days ago. Okay, and what is it? What is it, the low tonight? Uh, in, in the middle, well, early this morning. Exactly 61% retracement of that low. Exactly. And look at it now. Bada boom, bada bing, way up here. Now, you know, when you're, when you're that far above the open, okay, and, you, and you've already taken out the previous day's high, I mean, that, you know, you, sure, you could play against the double top, but the main thing is if you'll just look at it just a little closer, and that's what I was trying to do this morning, because when I saw that strength, I said, oh, do not want to stand in front of this. Not a chance. So if we take a look at the Dow E-mini, we're going to get it up here again and just to show it, blow it up so you can see what we're looking at here. There's where we are this morning. You can see right down here at the bottom, there was your 61% retracement. Look what happened, folks. The market goes up makes a perfect A, B, C, D at guess what? The old natural gas number of 0.382. And of course, now we've exploded and gone above the high by considerable amount. And we're up at the 1.618 expansion uh, above 39,000, which you know takes it. We are now one, better than one standard deviation better in the S&P and, and also in the Dow Jones, not so much in the NASDAQ, but those two have taken up. There's no selling coming in. Folks, when you're trading these markets, you are trading against three of the most powerful entities ever even imagined in our, and I'm not talking about the Federal Reserve. These are more powerful than the Federal Reserve. They are in order of importance, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. Straight State Street is even is very very important because they buy real estate. I mean, they own Farm Bureau and believe me, and I know a couple other of these farming companies. So they're out there buying farmland like you can't believe. But that's that's what you're looking at when you're when you're watching these because it's it's extremely important to know that they tr they have these they they buy these quants or they hire these quants from you know Andrew Lowe at MIT and also from Harvard, Yale, wherever they come from. But they have you know mathematical backgrounds, supercomputers to help dig out these numbers and they're all dealing on the same thing that we're dealing with folks. We're dealing with the X and the Y axis. That's what we're looking at. So when we see these markets expand and contract and they stop at these numbers, it's because these are the numbers that are in Mandelbrot's, you know, uh, lightning bolt, you know, his fractal analysis. And that's why it's uh, so very important. And we, we do the same thing with, with my timing stuff. I do the same thing on the, C, on the uh, time scale as I do on the price scale. Does it work as well? Yeah, it works part of the time, but sometimes it works absolutely perfectly. Like this morning, just to give you an example, this is what I was looking for in the S&P, and we got a break coming up, and I'll finish that when we come back. But you'll see here, there's where we are. This is what I was looking for, the price to come in up in that time frame of a little bit after uh, 10 o'clock. And let's just get up, and we'll take and see what happened to it with a little bit of the old a, B equals C, D. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, I'm back, folks, and I was talking a little bit about the S&P. I wanted to point out um, the uh, when we look at the time scale on that, the uh, price target that we were looking at and the time target came in at uh, 42.99. The high was uh, well so far was a 43 and a quarter. Now, whether that's going to be the high or not, I don't know, but that was the predicted high based on that timing sequence. And what we were doing is we were looking at the time axis and we were looking at the price axis, and we do numbers on both. Uh, folks, when you're dealing with these folks, I want you to just tell you how big these three firms are, Black BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. They own, they have controlling interest in 60% of the S&P 500 stocks, 60%. OK, the amount of money that BlackRock has is estimated to have twenty seven trillion dollars. That's more than what the federal. Well, we don't know what the Federal Reserve has, but they're saying twenty two trillion, something like that. State Street, uh, Vanguard is right behind and then State Street is behind that. But State Street is heavily involved in real estate. And of course, BlackRock is also. However, Larry Fink, who runs BlackRock, is a true genius. He's been around for a very long time and he developed a program. And this is a um, putting money in the market program called, believe it or not, Aladdin. And believe me, Aladdin runs the show over there for those folks. We happen to have a relative that works right in that office. And so we have a little bit of inside information. And if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge available for you. I know nothing. I see nothing. I hear nothing. So anyway, but they do have a huge amount of, you know, statistical research and mathemat mathematicians doing these programs. And they're all based on numbers, folks. Remember, when you're doing an X and Y axis, I mean, there's only so, so many numbers that you can look at. Sure, you can look at numbers and, you know, uh, all kinds of statistics in the market, earnings and stuff like that. But it comes down to whether it's a buyer or seller, you got to look at the price. 
and you know how much volume is there with that. Now something is happening in the market that I think is important, but the market's not paying any attention to it at all, which means it's probably doubly important. If we take a look here, this comes from our good friend, Mr. BV over there in Texas, God bless him. Thank you, Billy, I appreciate these every day. That's very, very helpful to me. You'll notice here, this is the open interest of the E-mini S&P, and as you can see, prices are rising rapidly from that uh, low that we made back on the 14th of June, and you'll notice here, the prices of the open interest has been falling. That is ordinarily extremely bearish, but the market is not seeing it like that. Now, if you go over and take a look at the NASDAQ, you'll see that the open interest is rising and prices are rising, and that's bullish. So you have a quagmire here of which one's going to look, which one you're going to look at. So all I can tell you, folks, is flat be careful. That's all I can say is because when the news out there is as bearish as it was coming out of China today and the market doesn't do anything, shut the front door and raise the rent and just move on and do something else because it's just not working the way that you want it to work. That's the main thing. Now, something else, uh, you know, really dramatic has happened today, and that is I mentioned the crude oil. Uh, here was our number in the crude oil. I'll get this up here because this was the weekly chart. We were watching this uh, for a potential low in crude at the 87.35 level. The low last week is 87.01. We went down to 86.90, just took it out by a little bit today, and then immediately rallied more than $2 a barrel. The reason why we did that, folks, is that if you were watching the heating oil and if you were watching the um, gasoline, you'll notice that those contracts didn't even come close to uh, getting uh, knocked out. So let's just take a look at the gasoline one first because it went just about a tiny bit below the, the 382 and then had a pretty good rally, but it wasn't even close to those lows. And if you'll notice uh, when we see this, you have the perfect A, B, C, D pattern right there on the bottom, my goodness. That's, you know, that was down at that um, two, 290 and change. But look at that. That's a just perfect A, B, C, D right there. We had a nice rally, not much. And that's one of the things that we warned about in the newsletter is, look, this thing may not be ready to go yet. And, of course, it's backed off. It hasn't taken out those highs yet, but it's getting close. So it's telling us that maybe it's close. The main thing today is the fact with the really bearish news on crude oil, the fact that the Chinese market was coming with, you know, had lower lows in the last two years. And then also the Saudi Arabia came out and says, yeah, we're going to bring out more output to help you guys because we think you're such great people. Anyway, those are two of the things that happened. And, of course, we've had a, a pretty good rally from that. Now, if we look at the heating oil, you're going to be seeing pretty much the same thing we didn't come anywhere close to a new bottom in the uh, heating oil let me just get up to just barely i mean barely just took out the previous day's low and only went down to a 382 so those are some of the ones that we're we're really watching here this morning you know to give an idea if we we're at some pretty critical levels but the main thing is the news came out big time news folks and bringing about news we've got a friend over there in uh Oh, he's actually in Poland now. Mikey, this is for you, buddy. Yaksimaj Dobje. Here is a chart of the S&P that they're talking about here, that the bear market is over. And there it says, rest in peace, bear market. For now, anyway, signals point to more rallying, and it certainly could do that. So I, I'm posting this for you, uh, Mike, because I don't look at the news but I bring it to your attention because uh, I don't know who this dude is. He doesn't know who I am. But I know one thing that he doesn't know, and that is if prices are going higher, there's more buyers. If prices are going higher, there's more sellers. And that's all I really need to know. And that's the main thing that I try to focus on is not how much money you're going to make, but how much money you don't want to lose. Now, I wanted to share one other chart before we come to the break, because I think it's a really important one, and that is the chart of the GDX, which is the Gold Miner Index. And folks, when I saw this over the weekend, this is a daily chart, up to date, I could not believe where it was. I mean, it's barely making a 382 off of the high, you know, way back in June on March 28th. 
I mean, look where gold has gone, folks. Gold has gone from 1876, excuse me, 1676 up to 1825. You know, and 1825 was a 382 on the long-term daily on gold, for God's sakes. We'll look at that when we come back from the break. But look how weak the gold miner index is. And that's with the stock market rallying. Look at the stock market's rallied 20% off that bottom. Something's wrong with gold and silver, boys and girls. That's what this is telling me. Why, you know, why aren't the producers of gold and silver doing much better? I don't understand this. You know, when we come back from the break, we're going to go down memory lane, folks. We've got some questions about the old days at Drexel and Laverne Redfield and some of the other stuff that we've done through the past, and we're going to answer some of those questions for you, too. So when we come back, we'll have, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the gold market next, and when we come back, and then right after that, we'll get into the, uh, some of the historical stuff that you've asked about. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the, the, the gold up here, and you can see that basically explains why that GDX has gone nowhere, because neither is gold. All gold has done is made a 382 retracement off of the high that we had back at 2060. Okay, so not really much going on, but I think eventually it will come down the path and do relatively well, so we'll see. Now, I hope you're going to be able to see this or not. I'm going to come up here and see if we can do this or not. I'm going to have some questions about uh, 
how I was involved with the you know coins and stuff with Laverne Redfield collection and stuff back in uh, 1976. I still keep one of these old dollars up here. This is an old silver dollar that I I got at a poker game. Oh, maybe. Oh, six or seven months ago. I don't know if you can even see it. Yeah, there it is right there. This is an 1826 uh, uh, piece dollar, and uh, it's only worth about 30 bucks. It's no big deal. But uh, how, how it happened was I started working for Drexel in August of uh, eight, uh, 1976. Laverne Redfield died in 1974. He was a hermit and basically a collector up in Carson City, Nevada, it's just he and his wife. They lived in a beautiful mansion there, and uh, he was one of the people that was heavily involved with the um, – when he was just a really young man uh, in the Carson City Mint, which went out of business or stopped minting coins in, uh, I believe, 1901 was the last time that they did it. But when he died in 74 for two years, no one really got to look at the coins that were there. It was in the basement of the mansion plus some of the other rooms of the house. And uh, the folks down in Los Angeles that were operating to get that uh, thing it was Leroy uh, Linhart and Steve Markoff and uh, oh my gosh Jonathan uh, what was his name uh, Alan Alan Silverman from American Coin Bob Gilmillion and Ronnie Downing and uh, they were making trying to make a bid on these coins and uh, there was there were 400 bags believe it or not 400 bags. Of these coins right here, folks, with a thousand to the bag means it weighed 54 pounds, and within that there were also other really incredible numismatic coins in bags and rolls of silver dollars. In other words, the silver dollars that were not they were not in a bag; they were actually printed at the mint and they were put in a 20 vial thing wrapped in paper. This was back in uh, 18, uh, 1889, 1886. This is how they wrapped the coins. They didn't have plastic stuff. So they were wrapped in paper really tightly and uh, they would write on it, you know, what it was and stuff like that. So uh, what happened to me was I was involved with going up and helping them pick out the coins, bring the coins back to Los Angeles. One of the reasons was is I had a van you know, one of these little fancy vans that we had back in those days. Plus, I had concealed carry permits, so I was able to carry, you know, a weapon. And so I was supposed to be security guard. And believe me, I would have said, raise my hands. The coins are in there. Leave me alone. <laughs> None of that happened. But uh, when I when I got back, uh, they gave me, as a bonus, they gave me three rolls of coins from the uh, Carson City Mint from uh, 1889 uh, Brand new. They've never been touched. They still never been touched by human hands. And uh, so I have, there's 20 to the roll, and I, I have some of those uh, that I have, plus a few other things over the years that I've got. But the, the real enjoyment that I had was when I first started there at Drexel in 76, we started selling cougarans and stuff. Uh, you could buy them over the counter starting in about 74. By the time I'm at Drexel, 76, they wanted to be able to do that, but they didn't have a supply. Well, the supply was I had all these coin dealers that had the coins, and all I had to do was pick it up from them and deliver them to the people who wanted to buy them. And so it turned out to be a really good you know, deal for me and a really good deal for them. I made a lot of great friends, but I'd been friends with Bob Gilmillion since 1968 because one of his best customers was Wes Parker of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he and his father, Maurice, uh, bought, oh, my goodness, three or 400 uh, cougarans and maple leaves off Bob over those years. And I delivered most of those to them. So I got to know those gentlemen pretty uh, pretty well, along with a few others along the road. But, folks, these coin dealers led a life like, uh, like, like the great Gatsby. They really did. They lived hard, loved hard, die young. And, and they all did die young because I'm the only one that's left. <laughs> and make a good-looking corpse, which is the old um, uh, Navy SEAL motto. However, um, they really knew how to party. Just to give you an example, for some of the birthday parties that they had for their spouses or for themselves, uh, we, they had um, Jimmy Rogers, okay, uh, Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash, and... Uh, Bill Robinson, also known as Smokey Robinson. Those are the Liza Minnelli. I mean, these are people that go to Vegas, I mean, you know, and perform, and they would pay for these folks to sing five or six songs at a birthday party for 25 or 30 grand. I mean, it was amazing the amount of money that they spent. But my one of my most favorite stories 
is uh, we were up in La uh, Lake Tahoe, Nevada for a, uh, a coin thing. Uh, this was back in 77, and I went up, you know, for security again. And we got stuck. It was in, it was in April, and it was a really freak uh, snowstorm. And so there were very few people could get in, and we were able to get in, of course. There was hardly anybody there. And uh, there, were, there were, I think there were about 25 corn dealers. I was in a group of about six, uh, five corn dealers and myself. And so we were, they wanted to shoot some craps, so we went over one of the crap tables. And at the crap table was none other than Arnold Palmer and his wife, Winnie. And he was such a friendly fellow. I mean, he was just unbelievable how nice he was. And the coin dealers were having a great time, and they were having a great time. And so Leroy said, hey, why don't you join us for dinner? We're going up to Hugo's, which was the really premier place in all of northern Nevada, a five-star French restaurant, and said, please be our guest. And they said, oh, we would love that. And so the eight of us go up there, and we have this fabulous dinner. And the, the, the Dom Perignon was flying flowing like uh, water out of a faucet, you know, three, four, five bottles, I forget, it was a lot. Anyway, what was really funny is, they, uh, Leroy said he was going to pick up the check, which expected him to do anyway. Well, anyway, the check comes, and the maitre d' looked at him, and he said, I'm sorry, sir, he said, there's no bill. And Leroy says, well, I want, I want to pay the bill. He said, no, there's no bill. He said, Mr. He said, uh, uh, Mr. Palmer eats here all the time, he's free, he and all of his guests. He's our guest, and you're our guest. So we had all that. Should have had a couple extra bottles of champagne. But anyway, that was uh, that was uh, something that I that I always remembered. Uh, and and uh, well, uh, I don't want to go into some of these stuff. Anyway, if you have any questions, and it seems like the light board is lit up, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We want to bake, uh, take a look. If someone's asking another question, uh, what's the rarest coin that I had? You know, I, I had a whole bunch of them that I gave to the kids when they were having birthdays and stuff. I, I used to have sculptured St. Gaudens. That's when they were about eight grand a piece. I don't know how much they are now, but they're way up there. And I had a you know a $1,000 bill, a $500 bill. I had a couple of railroad bonds that are just absolutely beautiful that uh, were printed that were really nice and then some other stuff. You know, I did okay. You know, I'm not, not doing any complaining or anything, but to know all those guys through those years was uh, – you know, and then on top of that, you know, I had all my Drexel customers, you know, from, uh, you know, the movies and, you know, the TV series and all the other stuff, the plus the folks that I met at the racetrack. I mean, I was just flat out lucky. That's basically it. Call me lucky, Mr. Lucky. Anyway, let's move on. Let's, uh, what, any other questions that we had? Oh, I had one other thing that I wanted to cover about the markets. Let's get back up here a little bit and we'll see where we are here. And I wanted to bring it up. And here is the gold market. Let's get the gold market up here because I wanted to show you this gold market because it is where that 382 was residing within about three bucks. And that's why we, I believe, we're coming down here. And I think we're going to be coming down quite a ways in the gold market. So pay attention to this one. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Ten four. Okay. Sorry, boys and girls. I lost uh, connection there for a bit. Don't know why, but um, I believe we have Mike on the line from Orange County. Mike, are you there? Hi, Larry. How you doing this morning, this afternoon? Just Where living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass, Mike. What do you I got for to me know today? Where you think we're going with crude oil now? Um, I, in your in your newsletter, your report, you said if we break this level, we're going to go a lot lower. Are we looking That's for a retrace to get short back on that? No, no, I'm not, Mike. The reason why I'm not is I, I talked about a little bit earlier on the air here is the fact that the natural gas, excuse me, the gasoline and the also the heating oil never even came close to those old lows. So all this was was a test of that low because remember we were looking at 87.35. The low was 87.01. We went 10 cents. You know, on a contract that's worth eighty thousand dollars, hello operator. I mean, there should have been a lot of stops down there, Mike, and there there yeah. weren't. So that's why I think we're probably getting. And we've already rallied two dollars a barrel. We've given a half a dollar of that back already. But uh, I still think it's got a chance. But if we close below that level, Mike, that would tell me, bada bing, bada boom, there's something really wrong. But right now, okay. uh, I have to say we're still in the bouncy mode. And okay. the news so is so you, bad, and we, it's not going. Well, should we look? Should we have look in uh, look to get uh, long on that when it gets to that level? Did if you, if you have if you have the courage and like to read the tape and and wondering why there's no selling down there when it was making no news lows, and that's what I I didn't get it I didn't get it bought till a whole lot higher, but I was seeing it happen, okay. and I was in some other things that were working pretty good, you know, natural gas and. Uh, and also the gold, so I, I I didn't get focused on the crude oil like I should have been. But yeah, I was watching that because if there's a if there's a number down there that everybody's looking like like eighty seven oh one and it goes down ten cents lower, that's a hundred dollars on an eighty thousand dollar contract. I mean, hello operator. Yeah. I mean, there's no selling there. Okay. All right. Well, does, I, does that well, help, I Mike? I mean, I don't know. I was I, that's myself, just reading like, the tape. Well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Well, hey, I didn't either. I just waited, waited, and I ended up buying it higher. But my my comment was okay. the same thing. If it goes up and makes a new high, just like we went up in the S and P to forty three hundred, we where'd we go to forty three point two five? And what did it do? It stopped going up. So that tells you there wasn't much there. That's all. Right. All right. Thank you, Larry. I really appreciate it. Mike, I appreciate you calling in, and thank you very much. It's always good to hear from you, all buddy. Right. Bye now. Okay. All right, now we want to talk about the FTSE here because the FTSE is really at a critical level, folks. 
Uh, we don't trade that. Uh, our good friend, Mr. Trader Tom Hugar does, who happens to be vacationing all this month. But as you can see here, we got this huge double top formation. You can see the little green uh, three drive to a top pattern. You know, this is a, a pretty important one because that's a four hour thing over the last five or six days. So that is a really important one sitting right there at that big ABCD that we had right in the middle right here. So very, very important. And then remember that 4,300 was the, uh, well, actually 4,292 was one standard deviation in the E-mini S&P. And boy, they follow these numbers pretty nicely. So we're expecting a, a correction today, maybe for a few days, and then we'll see, you know, what it's going to do you know, uh, from that level. Now, we also want to look at the uh, German DAX because uh, it's been uh, gathering steam since they realized that maybe they're going to have enough uh, fuel oil to keep them from freezing to death this winter. And my guess is it's probably going to be this warmest winter that we've had in decades would be my guess. Uh, you'll see here that we had the beautiful 382 retracement right here, just like we've done in the natural gas and also uh, in the Dow Jones today, we pointed those three three eight twos out. But this is an hourly. We had another three eight two right here, as you can see, and this market continues to go higher. So uh, tomorrow we'll have a better update of where that market's going to be going from that time, and then we'll be able to uh, to see uh, how the things uh, how the things work out, and then we'll move on uh, to the next one. I had one other. Uh, I thought would be relatively important chart here, if you'll give me one second, and that is the euro, because this is the market that just continues to keep on giving, and we'll just, uh, and it's just so bearish, folks. I mean, they, this is another reason why that it's going to be hard for the uh, the uh, the dollar, to, to, because the dollar is so strong, it's going to be hard for gold you know, to get moving very much. So anyway, you can see here the 382, we're way down into here, way below the 102 level, folks, already today. We pointed this out last night that it had some really strong indications that it wanted to be going down today, and that's exactly, you know, what has been happening. The only one that hasn't really performed like we thought it was, I mean, it's not been a big deal, I mean, it hasn't moved anywhere, was the fact that the Treasury bonds, we expected the Treasury bonds to uh, really start to, uh, you know, to fall apart, and they, they haven't actually done that. Well, they haven't gone up yet either, but uh, they, they should be on a down day today, given all the bad news. But here again, you had really bad news from China and that bond market, and ours held up relatively well. I mean, we're trading... Uh, and about that 141, just a little below that. So it's uh, it, it's really amazing how these things move. But remember, like I said on the show here, you've got three companies that run this stuff, and these things don't go down until these companies sell. And that was BlackRock, number one. Number two is Vanguard. Number three is State Street Capital. Those are the ones that make the operations work down there because they control well over – 60% of the value of the S&P 500, plus I'd hate to even think what it is in the NASDAQ and some of the others where they have huge amounts of uh, some of these stocks at, a, at extremely low prices that they can uh, put in and out of the market uh, whenever they want to. So those are some of the things that we're watching here this morning. I, want, I covered the open interest part. Okay, there was one other one that I wanted to cover. Uh, tomorrow, no guests, but I'll have a, I'm going to talk tomorrow about the foreign exchange markets and look at some of the exotic ones that we don't always look at. And uh, that would be the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, and, and a few of the others. But we're also in the midst, we're in the midst of a, uh, corn market, folks, we have to pay close attention here. So oh, please come on, on, Corny, where are you? Okay, here's where we are here. We hit some real major resistance here. Oh, no. Stop the front door and raise the rent. There we go. Here she is. Just a second. Let me get the corn up here. Had some major resistance over the weekend. We're down about 20 cents uh, from that level. We posted this in the newsletter, of course. And there's your 382 retracement there on Friday. And we got down to, I believe, corn hit the, uh, 
think we're down 619. Well, 626, so it didn't come down too much. It's down about 15 cents from the high. But the fact that it was able to do that, you know, was, uh, you know, relatively, uh, you know, very, very important. So, well, we got another break coming up here pretty soon. We got a cr crude oil still holding up, I notice, at 89. The low was uh, 86.90, so we rallied 2,000 bucks uh, in the uh, crude oil. And we rallied a whole lot and rallied about, oh my goodness, we rallied $5,000 in the natural gas. And not only that, but the natural gas, I just, uh, my alert just went off to tell me we just made another 382 retracement there at 8.7. So we'll see if that's going to hold it for the time being. So we're going to take a little break now to pay a few bills. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Oh, geez. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, so we're going to take a look here at the silver chart. And as you can see here, we've been in a very strong downtrend. We've not been able to make the 382 retracement like we made in the um, gold market. So it's still telling us it's relatively uh, negative, even though we've had a $3 uh, an ounce uh, rally from, you know, 617 to 20, almost 20x, 21, so almost $0.04, cents, $4, $4 uh, per ounce. 
So I think this is still, we're going to watch it on a pullback. But uh, I believe longer term, there's a chance here in gold. This next pullback that we have, I'm looking at a, a number from 1825. It's 100, we were up 150 points. So let's figure it's going to go, come back 70 points. That's going to take us back to around 1775. So let's be watching 1770, uh, make it 1750. Let's be watching 1750 in the gold market. That'll be a 50% retracement. If you get that with an ABCD, bada bing, bada boom, then you'll be able to see that. You know, that's it. That's a bad sign. It's a, that's a negative sign, the fact that the gasoline is negative below that level. That is negative, negative. It never should have gone below 873. So that's my two cents worth uh, on that. So that's what we're watching here today. So tomorrow, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. And I'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. And try to do something for your neighbors, folks, because there's a lot of folks out there that are having a whole lot of trouble. So we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Bye-bye. 